Our planet is a watery world. More than two thirds is covered with water. And once you go into the deep, almost anything discovered is new. The Earth's deep sea is still for large parts unexplored and the scientific community has few clues on what lives down there and what kind of natural processes are interacting with the seabed. Exploring such unknown territory, gaining knowledge and understanding key processes form a major challenge as the ocean floor is not only abundant with unexpected life, some parts are also rich in metal ores, mineral resources, oil and gas. Natural resources that may merit commercial mining, but only if we are sure of what we're doing. In April 2015, an international group of marine scientists sailed on the Dutch research vessel Pelagia. Their mission? To retrieve and analyze ocean floor data and to perform unique experiments. I hope the instrument worked fine and uh, that we recover good data and good quality data to understand what's going on. Their aim is to map, document and evaluate the impact that future deep sea mining operations could have on these unfamiliar ecosystems. This multidisciplinary research project is focused on an area of deep sea hydrothermal activity situated on the mid-Atlantic ridge southwest of the Azores. Here, at a depth of more than two kilometers, hot, metal-rich brine boils up through the cracks in the volcanic seabed. Where this warm hydrothermal fluid mixes with the cold ambient seawater, sulfide minerals rich in metals precipitate onto the seabed, forming seafloor massive sulfide deposits. When hydrothermal activity ceases, these vents become inactive and at some point could become commercially viable mining sites. For this week, the a priority is to recover these moorings and the landers and do some additional CTD work. But before industry can develop the necessary methods and technology, an intensive environmental impact study is needed to assess the vulnerability of these unknown ecosystems. We got interested because deep sea uh, mining will probably occur in the mid-Atlantic region and in the Azores region in the future. We don't know when. So we were interested to join uh, other partners in Europe to try to understand what could be the impacts of this activity in the deep sea ecosystems. Everybody, uh, I think, can imagine that if you mine there, and uh, so you dig off the, the first five meters or more, you make a big plume of uh, sediment and maybe other pollutants. And uh, the question is, is this going to destroy the, uh, the environment? Is this uh, something to be concerned about? And so, a year ago, instruments designed to withstand extreme pressures were lowered onto the seabed to monitor the deep sea environment around the hydrothermal vents. Hopefully, these instruments will have survived a grueling year, but first, we need to retrieve them from the deep. Where are we going, Paul? Yes, here he is. Oh, it looks perfect. Yeah, it was a bit slow, but uh, I'm glad that it's, it's here. Uh, this is the Bober lander that has just surfaced. It lets us wait uh, longer than, uh, than usual, so these are really anxious moments. But it's up here. The only uh, strange thing is that the, the pickup line is uh, seems to be lost. So we're now busy speculating what has happened. The glass sphere that keeps it floating has completely disappeared. So probably it imploded and that's why it looks like this. Sometimes the instruments come back completely uh, corroded and broken. And the same could happen with instruments uh, used for mining. And that's actually also part of the current cruise that we look at these corrosion rates and mechanisms and to see what kind of materials would be best to use. On each lander, a plate with different commercial materials was attached uh, with metals, but also plastics. So what type of corrosion would occur? The rate of corrosion. 
Kruifel 38 SA5. And in combination with, uh, with microbes that are often present, this corrosion could be even increased. So if they start to make instruments for deep sea mining, these components could affect that. That's the whole goal of the project, is to produce knowledge that is not only um, useful for the conservation, but also for the industry. So in this sense, it's a very win-win project because we are working with the industry to develop better technology. We are working with scientists to improve the knowledge on the deep sea. And we are, have a very good team uh, working with the government to pass the message to the political agenda. To study the dispersion of hydrothermal plumes, physical oceanographers are investigating the water column and establishing submarine waves and current patterns. The result? Data that can help us predict and assess any disturbances that future mining could cause. Yeah, we measure some aspects of this by uh, using uh, instruments that can monitor the density, which changes in the ocean because of uh, variable uh, contents of salt and heat. And such a stratification actually allows also for these underwater waves. So they are underwater gravity waves, same as surface gravity waves, but then they have the whole expanse of the ocean to propagate in. So they cannot only propagate horizontally, but also vertically. It is a big challenge because the ocean is not like a laboratory, it's huge. That's why I'm always having a keen eye on what the biologists find in terms of spatial distributions of sponges, corals, but also uh, phytoplankton blooms, because they can tell something about the presence of those hotspots. One of the landers, we call it the fish observatory. We have two cameras directed to a uh, bait that's offered every 14 days. And we use uh, sardines on oil because then it's preserved, because this has been on the bottom of the sea for almost 12 months. And uh, so we can record uh, scavengers like crab and fish, and see if there's a seasonality and what kind of species anyway there are in the, in the, in the deep sea in this area near Rainbow. To discover more about the ecology and seafloor two kilometers down, a specialized underwater video system is used for imaging and documenting specific areas of interest. I'm filming the seafloor and I'm trying to hold the camera frame on a steady height above the seabed. We have nice images. Some hydrothermal areas may seem deserted, but in others, the ocean floor is teeming with life. Biologists are fascinated by all life forms that drift in the spotlights of the cameras. Yeah, you see it. Yeah. Have you ever seen it before, though? No. It's the, the feeling of discovery that you have, being the first persons to look here at the seabed, and um, you never know what you what you'll find. <laughs> Since we only know about five percent of the seafloor. We have 95% more to discover and it's an interaction of all the different disciplines. So we have biology, geology and the physical oceanography and combined they can tell you really something about processes that are occurring in the deep sea and I think the research that we're doing here could also be applied to other areas in other oceans for instance. Can deep sea resources be responsibly mined? Well, it all depends on many factors. But step one in taking decisions responsibly is an evaluation of scientific facts. And uncovering them is the task of missions such as this one. It is already a success. Uh, we are right in the middle of the project. We are already able to finish our experiments in the lab. So we have now an idea what the impact of the different volumes and concentrations of plumes and toxics to different organisms. And we have been able to uh, communicate very well with the industry, but also with the policymakers. And the policymakers now are well aware that uh, uh, mining has economical potential, but also uh, conservation uh, problems and impact. The research we are doing here is, a, I think, a very good example of how you can bring together industry and academia to both profit from science. On the one side, we are exploring large areas for the deep sea, which are until now uncharted, 
And on the other hand, this is vital information for the industry to develop methods to deep sea mine without major impact on the deep sea environment.